Hello, my name's Fred McNeil, and you're watching QAC TV7. Thank you very much for being with us. We've started a new show, and it's called Fireside Chat. And what we're trying to do is introduce to you these wonderful people who are spending their time and energy helping us run the county. We're going to start with the county commissioners, we'll go to the sheriff's office, and we'll talk to different public servants so you get to know them, and it'll be easier for you to feel comfortable contacting them. We're going to almost finish our county commissioner series, and we're delighted to have with this uh, Commissioner Mark Anderson. Mark, first of all, congratulations well, on the election. Thank, thanks, Fred. And thank you for coming on TV. Well, we spent a great deal of time uh, traipsing around the county, waving and doing the things we that you do. We had a good do. time, didn't we? Uh, and that's where I met you. Uh, and and had coffee with you uh, in your house and met Roosevelt. And... Uh, yeah, your friend. And we'll have coffee again. Mark, what we're doing on the show, we're, we're just basically a chance for you to tell the public who you are, okay? So let's turn back the clock here. Uh, born and raised where? Well, uh, I was born in Baltimore Mercy Hospital while Franklin Roosevelt was still president of okay. the United States. Okay, that dates us so a I'm bit. a pre boomer. Okay. All right. Uh, grew up in uh, Baltimore uh, elementary school. Uh, I was admitted uh, to an accelerated program at Woodburn Junior High School, and that consolidated three years of what we call junior high school, okay. uh, seventh, eighth, ninth grade, uh, into two years. That's the way I went through yeah. it. And uh, then the family moved to Severna Park. Well, let's, be, let's just jump back a little yeah, bit. Let's go sure. back, way back again. Okay, uh, mom and dad, what did mom and dad do? Uh, Mom was a secretary. My father worked at the Sparrows Point Shipyard. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. And siblings? I have one brother, uh, currently retired, and lives in Arnold, Maryland. Oh, okay. All right. So nearby. All right. Now, how about, let's go, say at the elementary school. Now, where'd you go to elementary? Uh, public School 50, Abbotston. Okay. And okay. As a matter of fact, it sat on the corner of Gorsuch and I forget the other road, but my father's high school was City College, and my mother's high school was Eastern High School. Okay. Uh, then only men got to go, or boys got to go to city, and the women went to Eastern. I it didn't now, prevent them from getting together, though, apparently. Elementary school, favorite, uh, think for a second, any favorite teacher or any good memories? Uh, my first grade teacher was uh, Miss Nellie. Miss Nellie, uh, okay. a, a, a Very aged and very respected person. And, you know, it was the first time I was introduced to how to spell. Okay. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I think I can spell fairly well now, though. Uh, word check uh, and spell check is pretty useful. Makes it a little bit easier, right? <laughs> yeah. So Mrs. Nelly, now as a kid, uh, sports or theater, what, what, what kept you out of trouble? Or what got you well, into trouble? Actually, yes. not much kept me out of trouble because I had, <laughs> okay, they, I had to send notes home every day uh, or in performance in, <laughs> like in the all classroom. Of us. Yeah. Like all of us. So. But, but a sport, Little League sports, I mean, uh, people don't understand sports and Little League stuff are no, different not, those days. No, no. Uh, not much. Uh, when uh, we get into this later on, uh, I developed an interest in sports. Okay, okay. So you were at uh, uh, elementary school, and then you, like I, went to the old junior high system, 7th, 8th, and 9th yeah, was junior high. It, it, it's kind of interesting. Uh, when I went to elementary school, I was four because uh, my birthday's in September. Okay. And when I came out of the school, I looked for my mother. She wasn't there. I had to find my own way home. <laughs> oh, you like me. We used to walk Baltimore. to school. Yeah, I walked. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and uh, yeah, and walked home for lunch, and walked back again in this, in Waverly, in sure. Baltimore, Maryland. Time. Well, you're like me. I walked to school. Maybe you did the same thing. In elementary, junior, and high school. I never got it. There's no such, bus services. We didn't need it. Well, it, the bus service I needed was the the uh, the MTA 36 bus that I picked up on Kirk Avenue and drove us out to Woodburn. Public transportation. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about high school. You get, what did you do in high school? Any good, uh, like I always think about, you know, there's one or two teachers in high school, probably changed my life. Anything like that in your high school well, experience? Uh, first off, when we came uh, to Round Bay and Severna Park, uh, the, uh, we were bused uh, to Annapolis. And the first year in high school, 10th grade, 10th grade uh, was in Annapolis. Now, this is a Supreme Court mandated oh, bus? No, 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 no that, that, that's, where, that's where the school was located oh, that's for where high school. Oh, that's where you had to go, okay. Uh, this was during the time that they were building Sferna Park oh, High okay. School. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, they finished uh, that in the, the summer of 60, and the junior class uh, from various high schools around, uh, 
were transported to and had to go to Severna Park. Severna Park. We had no senior high uh, okay. class. So you guys opened the doors well, to Severna uh, Park? We, we were the ones that did the fight song, the colors, the, okay. the falcon, the, you know, the whole nine yards. Okay, so you kind of set that nice Severna Park, still an excellent high school, great athletic teams, and an awful lot of distinguished graduates, right? Yeah, well, yeah. Um, there was, uh, to get back to that question, sure. uh, a teacher that stood out and uh, sort of uh, uh, a precursor to the rebellious uh, 60s. Uh, there was a, uh, a teacher by the name of Mr. Brett who taught advanced biology. Okay. And uh, this is in 1961. And he dared mention uh, in an advanced biology class for seniors in high school Hu something about human sexuality. Oh Lord! The floodgates open. <laughs> uh, well, uh, he was he was told uh, that his contract would not be renewed. Are you kidding me? And he said, "If that's the case, I'm leaving." Uh, the senior class uh, rebelled, and we did the first job action that I ever participated. And this is in. nineteen. This is early sixty one. Okay. Uh, we all planned that uh, on the day that they had the most popular lunch, none of us would He's eat. Gonna buy. And, right. and that happened. Then we found out that Ralph Hartsgard of WBLO oh, okay. uh, News and the TV cameras were outside, and we all walked out. <laughs> we kidding? had people uh, already arranged to faint. <laughs> and, uh, and there were people crying uh, with onions in their hands. You know, and, and it was quite a show. Yeah, you know, hey, and, and, uh, you know, this uh, predates the Berkeley free speech movement. You guys set the, set the country rolling in the 60s. Uh, well, and that's when Severna Park had uh, not only the 12th, but it, all, it went all the way down to the seventh grade. Okay. It was a junior, senior high school. Right, right, right. And then all the other kids got, got carried away. So, okay. in any case, uh, I graduated in the first class at the tender age of 16. And again, that's 61. Is my year right? 1961. September, okay. uh, I entered the University of Maryland. Okay. Before we get to Maryland, how about high school? What uh, extracurricular activities? Uh, or what you do? I wrestled. Oh, you're a wrestler. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, found self-control because in wrestling you have to have not only good shape and work out strenuously. She also had to watch weight. Okay. What weight, what, what weight class were you? Well, I started out at, a, at 125 pounds and okay. tried to wrestle at 103. Mm, you had to lose some weight. Well, I got to 107 and three quarters, and it, <laughs> the physician more. said, if you want to lose any more weight, uh, you know, how about cutting a leg off? <laughs> okay. So uh, the problem and why I went down to that weight class is because the very best wrestler in Anne Arundel County was on my team at 112. You didn't want to wrestle against Well, I wrestled him, and I wrestled him uh, to a tie, and I was okay. the second best wrestler in, in, in that area. Okay. But it didn't matter, because I couldn't beat him. This guy was just yeah. good. Yeah, he was that good. I was also the manager of the football team. Okay. I handled all the, the, you know, the equipment, to set up all the microphones, did all the organizing, and so forth. Okay, so I, wrestling taught you a lot of good self-discipline. Absolutely. And, and great sport, right? That's great right. Great sport. The one memory I do have, mm -hmm is that the one and only time I didn't make weight. We were wrestling the varsity team from Glen Burnie High School. Okay. And the, the young man uh, who I was to wrestle was called over to say, and his name was uh, Salazar, as I remember. His coach said, well, do you want a match? And it, he looked at me, and I can tell you, I looked like I was about 12. Okay. <laughs> I pinned him in 32 seconds mm. in the first, the first period. Very good. All right. So it was a and good. And he was crew. their best wrestler. All right. Good. All right. Uh, he made a mistake. He misjudged. He looked at you and said, "This is an easy package," and you weren't an easy package. Uh, right. And I'm not an easy package today. Well, good. Now, what? Uh, before we go to University of Maryland, uh, grad so you graduate '61 at 16. You mm -hmm. were a young kid. All right. Oh yeah. What made you co University of Maryland College Park? That's right. Which, which I graduated. This yeah. can explain a lot here. Uh, what pushed you to Maryland? Just state uh, university. Local university. Okay. I applied uh, to Georgia Tech, Drexel, a number of others. That was the first acceptance that came in. Okay. I recall my first uh, uh, semester's total bill, room, board, tuition, books, was $500. Mm. And a lot of parents out there said, gee, I wish we had those days again. <laughs> uh, but even at that, uh, you know, my parents were not well-to-do. Sure. And uh, along the way, I had to, you know, 
sling hash uh, and wash dishes in fraternity and sorority houses. So tell me about College Park, a major, yeah. major? What was your major? Uh, my major, I started out in chemical engineering. Mm, tough curriculum, tough. Well, it was, yeah, when I got the first test, I, it was an eight. Mm. Out <laughs> of a hundred. Out of a hundred. <laughs> and, and the average was 22. Okay. But mm. uh, uh, a very brilliant uh, young man from India got a 96. Mm. Uh, so he I, ruined the curve for all of you guys. Well, but no, he was very helpful to me okay. because uh, I was able to convince uh, the professor to let me withdraw passing okay. with an eight. Okay. So I figured my talents uh, for persuasion would lead me in different directions. <laughs> different directions. So I went okay. into education. Oh, okay. I, gra I got a BS in education. Oh, I didn't know. Okay. Education for industry, actually. All right, okay. Well, let's go back. Describe for people now College Park University, Maryland, huge university, 50, 60,000 students, basketball powerhouse. I tell people, and I, I don't know that much about the early 60s, but Maryland at that time was probably a very quaint little university in terms of, no, no, go ahead. No, it was, a, uh, it was pretty big for, uh, I mean, at that time, it was one of the largest universities in the world because okay. it had uh, overseas, overseas uh, campuses. Uh, campuses. Right. Um, it was big. Uh, I think uh, the freshman class, six, seven thousand mm -hmm. uh, in my class. Uh, it, it was big comparative to, to high school and so forth. But that's where I flourished. Oh, college, okay. Yeah. Right. I, I, you know, and the, the story goes on. Uh, I pledged a fraternity. Uh, on fraternity row? Uh, no, actually oh, no. it was off. And uh, okay. uh, the, the house I pledged was filled with uh, you know, people that I still know, love, and care about and see. Lifetime friends. Uh, Sigma Phi Epsilon. The actual physical structure was not the attraction because it looked just like the house in Animal House. Okay. It was okay. dilapidated, uh, you know, three-story uh, frame house. Right on the edge of camp? Where were you? Uh, at, on Hopkins Avenue. Oh, I know Hopkins. Uh, okay, sure. Uh, the folks in that house became lifelong friends. Okay. My, the best man of my wedding I met there, uh, people that call and share with me uh, are still there. It's where I grew up. I became an officer, elected by peers. Uh, I ran for president, uh, was named the vice president because the fellow that beat me ended up being the president of the Chicago Board of Trade. You so I had, some, had some horsepower. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was not um, a lightweight. The, the biggest event that occurred during my college career was the assassination of my president. JFK. So you're there, you're on campus in November twenty second of sixty three. I right. was in class. Okay. And at uh, about seven minutes after one, uh, a man who you know is one a stranger you don't you you know a, a fellow you pass, a bearded fellow walked into the classroom. He said, "The president has been shot in Dallas, and is dead." Mm. Uh, you know you the no. When you hear a news like that, you never forget yeah. anything about that moment. Um, our people, generation, I can remember it. Everyone our age remembers it exactly. That's right. But go ahead. Continue. The, uh, we had a teacher, uh, Dr. Ward. Uh, she was a uh, uh, very crusty but excellent teacher. Uh, we started packing our books and said, where are you going? And we all kind of looked at each other. She said, okay. So the president's dead. Pretty soon, I'm going to be dead, and eventually all of you will be dead. <laughs> That's a crusty old gal. <laughs> no kidding. Uh, she lived next to Jesuits in Georgetown and hated oh, them and, and <laughs> moaned about them all the time. Okay. Anyway, uh, and it's just amazing because uh, Pope Francis probably prayed for a woman like that. Sure, sure. And save her. Uh, we stayed through the class, and her only concession, she never, you know, how as a teacher, when somebody's not prepared, they don't want to catch your eye for no. fear that, well, didn't matter. She went from th just her, from a chart, our chart. chart. And, and if you didn't have the answer, you made a big deal putting a zero <laughs> next to your name. <laughs> Doctor Ward taught me how to write in my language. Okay. Now she was an English teacher. I, I didn't catch Absolutely. Okay. She okay. was the, the uh, fourth semester English, English four. She taught me how to write in my language. And when I came home, my my, uh, I had things that I had to get done, and I asked my mother if she would be happy to uh, to type something. 
She said, if I hadn't seen you write this, I would have never guessed it was you that did it. She was that, yeah, Dr. She, Ward was that good of a teacher to change you? Uh, I got a B on the final exam and, uh, you know, I owe her, sure. even though she was... She changed your yeah. life. She made you be able to communicate, right? That is correct. God bless her soul, wherever she may she be, be right now. Looking down <laughs> and complaining. <laughs> or up. Now, let's go back. Uh, you intrigued me a little bit. So, you had a great fraternity experience. Absolutely. It was a growing up experience. Gave you some direction. Tell me about your major now. You said you... Uh, I had a, uh, a hybrid uh, major. Remember I said it was a BS right, in right, education. Right. It was uh, a, a major called Education for Industry. Uh, I wanted to do personnel uh, because it, I like the human side of the sure. enterprise. And this allowed me to take my electives in the business college and take all the, in, the you know, labor relations courses, right. the personnel courses, uh, and the production management courses. But the other unique thing about it is you're going into an industry. You need to know how things get made. So uh, we had an opportunity, uh, those of us that were in the industry side, to share space with the industrial arts teachers. Oh, okay. So I know But we how used to, to call the old shop teachers. Exactly. Yeah, right. I, I can run a lathe. I, I, I you know, can wire. I can do all of that stuff because we had to know about that. Uh, it was important. Uh, and by the way, that's why I absolutely uh, endorse vocational education. Well, let's hope we get a vocational high school well, in the next couple of years. And if we can't, shame on us. And if uh, and there there are ways that we can do something better, we should find it. Good. So, Marco, good experience at College Park, fraternity, great major. What happened right after you graduated? Well, I uh, uh, made application to uh, a business that had worked in for two summers. Uh, it had the. It used to be called National Plastic Products Company. Okay. So, this uh, is back in Baltimore? Or no, 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 it's no. in Odenton, Maryland, oh, near Odenton. Fort George Meade. Okay, sure. Uh, the name of the company at the time was NJ Fibers and Laminates Company. Met 1,600 employees, uh, covered about 100 acres in Odenton, and I was hired in their personnel department in 1966. And a matter of fact, on June 13th. Okay. Uh, Eight years later, I was the manager of human resources. You did well then, didn't you? Well, yes, and they had sold off divisions. Okay. There were three of them, and uh, w we were the remaining division. Uh, we manufactured high-pressure decorative laminate called Nevamar and a thick dirt, uh, decorative surfacing called Fountainhead. That competed with Corian. Okay. Uh, two weeks after my promotion, and this is a part of Exxon, number one huge company yes. uh, in the world, I figured, you know, a dream come true. Two weeks later, business is being sold. Oh, really? You got your promotion. They pulled the rug from under you. Best thing that ever happened. See, oh, okay. When and you're an H and R guy, so you eight years of H and R stuff. Yeah. yeah. And uh, general manager said, "Well, yeah, the company's being sold." And I said, "To whom?" He said, "To venture capital group from Cleveland called Chagrin Valley Company." I said, "You're kidding me." Exxon to what? <laughs> Who are these chagrin guys? Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, they said, well, you know, and you need to get ready because in two weeks you have to go to Cleveland and give a presentation on the human resources in our division. Okay. Uh, told my wife, she said, and my wife, who by the way, is, I've spent 46 years. She's known me 55 of my Congratulations. 70. Okay. Uh, I, I chased after her. It took me years to get her to say yes. <laughs> but be that all as it may. Uh, she said, okay, let's, let's go shopping. Hart Shaft and Remark, three-piece suit, new tie, new shoes. And I, I walk into their, the boardroom in, Cle in Cleveland, and there sits uh, the founder of Leaseway Transportation Company, the founder of Alco Standard, uh, the founder of Chagrin Valley, and an assortment of other individuals. So this is big brass. This is the big brass. And I sat down, and I just felt at home. Yeah. Uh, why I have no idea. I should have been scared to death. But gave my presentation. Everybody thought it was great. Uh, and in fact, the son of uh, the founder of Alco Standard come to live with us because they wanted to give him an assignment and he didn't have a place to go. And I said, "Well, come live with us for a while." Okay. So another story about him with a tea set with my daughter and all that. But uh, another story. We'll get to it. En we'll endless get to it. stories. That's good. That's good. Uh, 
that was the beginning of a great uh, career boost for me because I was one of nine managers of the division who was given an opportunity to participate in the first stock offering, okay. private stock. It's kind of interesting what they do. Uh, it, people that are unqualified or not qualified, uh, they, they hire a very expensive lawyer and they come in and they tell you a hundred reasons why there's no reason to buy this. Well, there's no way I wasn't going to invest in myself. And sure. I put it, I, yeah, that's right. You, it's just the law. And uh, I invested and uh, became a vice president. Uh, had uh, a, really a good career. And now, how long did you spe spend? So you spent the rest of your career with this? Uh, well, big, uh, oh. yeah, my, uh, getting to the end of that. Mm -hmm. uh, 16 years later, uh, with venture capitalists, they don't get paid unless they sell their shares. We kept, the management kept theirs and just rolled up. Finally, uh, International Paper, uh, who makes paper, part of laminate production involves a great deal of paper, uh, decided they wanted to buy the whole uh, company. And so uh, all of us that had our stock for 16 years did very Looking well. Looking good. You did, yeah. did very well. And I stayed. Okay. Now, look, let me go back. You mentioned the missus. Talk about the missus for a second. Well, it, she's probably the smartest woman I know. And she's always right. And that's why <laughs> as, my wife, for, as, as my wife as my wife is. I've been too, married right. for forty six years. They asked okay. well, how that happened. I said, well, she's always right. <laughs> Makes life easier. You know, I don't might not yeah. agree, but I wish I had. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, she's uh, uh, What's her name? First name? Ann. Ann. She graduated from the University of Maryland. Uh, she graduated well, she was also an R N, got a BS uh, R N, a master's in clinical psychology, and that's very helpful for a person in the business where ego can get out of hand. Sure. Because I, she's got this big pin, sticks it in my head, and all the air <laughs> runs out. says, calm down, honey, <laughs> calm down, okay. <laughs> and so you, now were you, you met at University of Maryland, or no. later? No, no. Ah, oh, we were in high school together. Oh, you went back there? Paid absolutely not a minute's or a second's worth of attention Didn't even know she was alive? Uh, they didn't even know I was alive. Oh, the other, okay. Uh, I met her at college, and asked her out, went to pick her up, she wasn't there. Stood you forgot. She stood you oh, Of course. <laughs> yes. You know, then uh, uh, after uh, graduation and I had this job at Nevermar, uh, we had occasion to meet uh, at a local tavern uh, with a group of the f f our mutual friends. And she's sporting uh, an engagement ring. Well, I said, well, you be here Goodbye. next. Goodbye. Yeah. Now no, you're here next week. Yeah. Well, I said, well, how about going out on Friday? She said, uh, Okay. When I got Saturday, the ring went back, and we were married in... Uh, Must have been another good presentation on your part. <laughs> I, I, I've been known to at least <laughs> be able well. to persuade some people. Do you have children? I don't know what you yeah, I have uh, one, uh, a daughter, okay. and her name is Karen. I have two grandchildren. She and her husband uh, live in Millersville. Okay. They used to live over here, uh, but both live on the other side. The bridge uh, was not something that... They like particularly Jim, my son-in-law, wonderful man. Uh, they're both attorneys, uh, and he works in Baltimore. She works in Upper Marlboro. And while she could work from home, uh, he would have to drive to Baltimore, come all the way. Fridays were dead. Just killers. It's, it's, it's just a killer. Uh, two grandchildren. Uh, one's 13, one's 10, uh, Stephen and Luke, pride and joy. Good. That's and what makes that's grandparents great. And hey, hey, goodbye, guys. <laughs> you know, the, the, uh, the uh, children are the capital generated in a marriage. Sure. The grandchildren are the interest. <laughs> well, I'm I a know, capitalist, so you know, I, 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 I can. All I, I know that. is they're they're knocking the interest down with all these gifts. Hey, let me ask you a question. What got? When did you come to the shore? And what got you to come here? Well, uh, we, uh, Ann and I, had a place uh, in Fenwick Island. And after you know, the, the job I had, and I had other activities besides that, you know, political uh, activity in Anne Arundel County, uh, I was working 80, 90 hours a week. Mm. Uh, we had a place, and it, you come over the bridge, and you land on Ken Island. It just seemed like... It's a different world. Uh, well, your blood pressure just seemed... You could yeah. almost feel... Pressure's off. It, the pressure's, the pressure's off. off. And then it built when you came back. Um, the... Uh, Nevermar, uh, after being with International Paper for a 
about four years. And by the way, I won uh, an award for performance uh, amongst all the, uh, the international paper, domestic human resources managers and professionals. I was one of five to get the, the chairman's award for performance. Congratulations. Uh, and then they were talking about my career and I said, my career's over. I quit. <laughs> but, yeah. I'll okay. give you eight months notice and, okay. uh, and that's what happened. Uh, in any case, uh, the, uh, the shore was greatly appealing. Uh, we looked uh, all over and uh, the realtor, the gal that said, well, what about this place here? And it was an aerial of uh, our property uh, on Ken Island down uh, good old Route 8. And we went, went in, sat on the porch. It's on the water. Okay. It was 700, 800 feet on the water. Probably fell in love on, with it. On right Shipping ship Creek. And we just sat on the porch. You know, the house, you know, was nice, you know, and all that. Um, got up and left. Uh, the realtor thought, well, that's a waste that's of it. time. That's Called it. her up and said, we'll take it. Well, made her job easy, right? Well, that's right. Well, didn't make mine very easy because... Uh, while the view was great and the porch is still there, uh, the missus said, I don't like anything inside oh, of here. Uh, the walls, the floors. You're in trouble. Floors, You're in trouble. We didn't get in until uh, July of the following year, which is uh, July of uh, uh, 95. Okay. All right. I've been there ever since. Good. And that's home sweet home. Let me ask you, we've just got a couple minutes left. What got you interested in politics? Have you always been interested in politics or just something? Uh, my boss uh, at Nevermar uh, was in, interested in politics. Uh, I was his right-hand guy. Uh, he ran Bob Cas Pascal's 5th District. I was given a precinct. Then I got the 5th District. He got the, the, the whole campaign. Uh, Jim Lighthizer, I was a delegate. I was his campaign manager. Uh, he was supposed to finish third. He was a Democrat, a right. Democrat. Uh, and he won his election, he won his re-election, he went on to be uh, Secretary of Transportation right. for eight years, right. and he was at my investiture to complete the loop. Okay. I'm the one that told him he won his election, at another sort of touchstone moment. So it's... Grassroots politics, you just I've got it. it. Yeah, okay. So and, yeah. and over here, I spent all my time uh, before getting involved in politics with my Elks Lodge and the American Legion okay. uh, and, you know, raising money and helping other people. So it was just grassroots and, hey, yeah. uh, you retired, you had yeah. some time, and you can give back to the community, right? Yeah, and uh, I thought, well, I'd like to lose some weight, and uh, I'll just run for office and uh, have anxieties and, uh, and lose <laughs> 40 pounds. You won't sleep and you won't eat for <laughs> a year and, and a half. And, right? and I'm, I'm going to keep it off. <laughs> okay, yeah, my blood you. work is fabulous uh, for all those who uh, okay. wish me ill. <laughs> okay. Now, Mark, we've got about a minute left. Right. With everybody, what we do is this. I'm going to ask you fun fu uh, f some fun questions. If you could have, this is just fun stuff. If you could have dinner with anybody, I've done this with all the other interviewees, if you could have dinner with anybody in the world, any time I get to bring them over to your house uh, next week, who would you have dinner with? Do they have with? to be alive or? No, they're li they can be dead. All Abraham Lincoln. Okay, Abraham Lincoln, uh, just because. Because I thought he was the, had the toughest job of any president and gave his life for his country uh, and probably knew it. And it, I think there, his second inaugural address I've used. Okay. So yeah, used and I, matter of fact, I used it after the, my primary victory. Uh, 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 malice towards none and charity for all. Okay, so so if you were against me, hey. No problem. It worked on. Uh, if you could go, and we probably were talking before the show started, if I could put you in a jet and send you anywhere in the world, someplace you haven't been, where would you like to go? I would like to go to Sydney, Australia. Oh, okay. Well, the, we have some people here that have been there. Uh, Ted was born in Australia, the cameraman, mm -hmm. oh. and I taught there for two years. Super. Okay. How about favorite food? Well, not eating much here lately because, uh, uh, you know, the, you know, the, the this. You didn't have time when you ran for uh, office, right? right? Um, uh, boy. When the missus wants uh, to make I, you happy I, when I, you go out. I, I, I like uh, uh, the, you know, like Thai. Okay, okay. All right, I like okay. a little spiciness. All right, all right, okay. How about uh, favorite book? We've, we've t you've talked about uh, Lincoln influencing you. If, is there a book in your life that you just said, hey, well, you know, Fred, I, this is the book I well, go to, uh, I enjoy uh, reading? I, I read copiously. Uh, I have an enormous library of military history because okay. it's a, uh, you know, I've been 
bought a farm we turned into a world war one battlefield i reenact world war one do you really oh yeah okay um uh, the last book that i read was jesus on trial All right. uh, and that was by david limbaugh and it was uh, i wanted to see it i gave it to the to my priest uh, to, to help him with his uh his homilies okay but uh uh, I read everything from military history. Uh, you like to read, uh, right? You like to read. Tolkien. Uh, yeah. My wife and I consume huge numbers of books all the time. Good, good. Keeps the mind growing, right? That's absolutely correct. And you got to keep it everywhere. Well, Mark, look, thank you very much for yeah. being with well, us. Thank okay? you for having and, me. And Appreciate have a it. wonderful I, four I, years. I, I, I bring us back. Well, we are on a regular basis. We'll, we'll help we'll all have the some laughs uh, or uh, we'll, more of them. We'll keep laughing. <laughs> Well, this is Fred McNeil thanking you for being with us. My time's up. Thank you for your time, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.